up and down day in the market. The Nasdaq was down about a percent at one point. It finished down 0.23. The Dow was up one and a half percent. Mo, it hit a 2023 high today. Really? Yeah. So the Dow was going up like crazy. The Nasdaq's falling. It was a weird day. S&P was up about 0.38. You guys know... I hate the way the Dow is calculated. They don't care about market cap. They care about the dollar price of your stock. If you have a stock that sells for $5 versus a stock that sells for 50, the $50 stock is worth 10 times more according to the Dow. That is absolutely asinine and stupid. I can't stand it. Guys, in the last month, in the month of November, S&P was up 7.8%. NASDAQ was up 8.9%. Put it this way, the NASDAQ's now up 8.5% in the last six months. Mm. All that gain was in November. Yeah. October 25th, the Nasdaq's up 11% since October 25th. Mm. Huge month. You don't hear anything about bear markets anymore. No. You know what else I read? What? It's the cheapest it's been in like a decade on hedging the market. Really? The cheapest it's been to buy options to hedge. So that means the fear is gone. The fear is absolutely gone. The VIX is at low what? levels. Is it at, the, is it at low levels? We're back, baby. I think the VIX is at 13% today. Today was such a strange day. 13, because, I mean. Like, I pay attention to the dollar and gold, and the dollar jumped up and gold didn't go down. No, it went down, I thought. It went down, but it didn't go down as much as the dollar went up. And By it's the way, just and, like, and gold like, is up to 2050 bucks. I know, I know. Usually, like, you see the correlation, like, dollar, gold, and or the inverse. It was not, it was a very weird day. Well, you see. It was a weird month. It's been a weird month. Everything's just been skyrocketing. NVIDIA crushed this month, and the stock is lower mm-hmm. than when it crushed. I mean, it's just bizarre. Actually, NVIDIA was one of the biggest losers of the market today. At one point, it was yes. down 3.4, 3.5%. How did it finish? 2.85. Oh, wow, 2.85. I'm actually surprised by that. I thought it would rebound a little bit more because the NASDAQ did as well. Yeah. Guys, new um, existing home sales absolutely collapsed. But in November, they just announced that, um, what was it? Shoot. Well, you're going to have to fill me in. <laughs> it was, uh, oh, no, I forget. But Powell <laughs> talks tomorrow. Yeah, Powell speaks tomorrow. Powell does speak tomorrow. What, are they, what was I thinking about? Something was announced this month. Home sales, 20-year low. I don't know. But, you know, a friend of mine owns a big mortgage company. I texted him the other day and said, hey, because I'm financing a house. Actually, I was just on the phone with the appraiser. And I said to him, hey, how many houses are you, uh, just because of talking about normal homes, how many houses are not appraising? It was like none. Because mm-hmm. Home prices are still up 4% in the Northeast Ohio and nationwide in the last year. So, again, interest rates have skyrocketed, but the supply has, has been nothing. Oh, and this is what I always nothing. told real estate investors. I was at a conference years ago, and they asked the panel, one of which guy was a self-proclaimed billionaire. Spoiler alert, he was not. Where would you invest right now? And they all said the exact same thing. I'd find fast-growing fast growing markets. I said, no, I would find where supply and demand are not together. That's what investing is. You look at demand has has actually plummeted on homes. But guess what? When you lack supply, what's going to happen to home prices? They're going to go up. Or they stay up. Or they stay up. And you have inflation going up. It's so funny. I was looking at homes in Vero Beach today just because it popped up on my realtor. And I was like, oh, let me see what's going on. There's nothing there. Really? I mean, compared to what there was before, there's nothing. It's nuts. You know, I built the house that currently Mo lives in in 2009. 2008, finished in early 2009. And I remember being into that with furniture, everything for like $150 a square foot. And that was a lot back then. Yeah. And I talked to the two high-end builders here in Cleveland. They said, I'm building houses for six or $700 a square foot, not including land, not including landscape in Cleveland. on high end. And I'm like, this is Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, that, sounds like, that sounds like Miami. Now, they're not going to sell for those. Right. And they're not trying to sell. Those are custom-built homes for people. Probably put stupid amounts of money into mm-hmm. them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you sit there and say, hey, guys, at the end of the day, as the supply of money increases, the value of the dollar is going to decrease. It's going to drive up prices for everyone out there. This is the reason why a place like Youngstown, Ohio, where Tim is from, has lost half its population since Tim was born, and yet home prices are still up. Yeah. In fact, at one point, they were beating Vegas appreciation, <laughs> even though Vegas was up like two or three times. One point in the last 15 or 20 years since the crash. That's my point, guys. It's not about, it's about what you pay. And even though Youngstown hasn't grown, they've been demolishing houses. And they haven't been building more houses. So even if, if you have a town of 100 people, it falls in half, but the housing supply falls by 70%, you're going to see an increase in housing prices. Mm-hmm. That's just it. Yeah. You see the market right now, a lot of people flooding towards these magnificent seven. 
They're starting to sound a lot like the nifty 50 back in the 70s. Just buy these companies. That's all you need. Boom. And the share of the top stocks in the S&P relative to the market is nearing all-time highs, if not all-time highs from last year. Hmm. I mean, it's insane, isn't it, Mo? Yeah, this is crazy. So November was a very tough month for those of you who are more bearish. I bought a lot of stocks in October. And just today, my banker messaged me and goes, hey, are you buying more? I go, what? Literally, I have stocks that I bought that are up 30%. And for the record... That makes me mad. That absolutely aggravates me. And, I, and I, you're probably scratching your head wondering why if you're new to this channel. I want things cheaper. I want to buy a company, have the sentiment shift, and it go lower so I can buy more shares. Eventually, the sentiment will shift back as long as the business has the same fundamentals that I invested in it for. What's that face for, Mo? Seeing, looking at stocks. Generac, bought at 80 Three, just a few weeks, a few months ago, a few weeks ago, it's at 117. I don't know. These are not good things for me. I want bear markets so I can buy stocks cheaper. And that's the mentality we want you to join us with, to root on, just like our community members. We have community members in here who, when the, when the days are red, they're like, these are great days. And the days are green. They're upset. Like, why can't we buy anything? Yeah. That's just the reality of it. And it, and it happened so quickly. Like there was, I mean, just five weeks ago, there were, I remember looking and saying, okay, this is getting close to value. And then, nope, nope, not anymore. And it skyrocketed. But Boom. the fact that it changed that quickly and they went up that much tells me something. Well, yeah, you can't have that sustain. Exactly. You just get, and for those of you who are waiting for interest rates to go down, I would ask you, hey, do you realize the market's up? Since interest rates started to fall back in March of 2022, interest rates were zero. Now they're at 5.25%, and the S&P is basically flat. So it's clear that that's not the... Well, elevation. and by the way, if you look at history, stocks tend to go down when interest rates go down. Why? Because that tends to be time of recessions. Mm -hmm. Why does the Fed decrease interest rates? Because they Let's want to... Easier. They want Because it's usually things are recession. They're in a recession, and they want to spur the economy. Mm -hmm. They want to let you allow you to go and borrow a little bit easier. Yeah, so I ask everybody who's rooting for high, lower interest rates, why do you want lower interest rates? What does that say about the rest of the economy that you have lower interest rates? And the Fed, they're talking tomorrow. I think Powell's in Atlanta talking to college and his comment is we're still going to be strong on interest rates, keeping interest rates up. We wanna get that 2% core inflation that excludes energy and food prices. They want that 2% core inflation and it's a little under four right now. These are the things guys that all these things work together. That's why we encourage you not to worry about guessing what's going to happen with interest rates. Buy a good company if it's at the right price. If it goes lower, buy some more of it if the fundamentals are still the same. If your thesis is still the same, why would you stop buying? Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. But it's hard to get your mind around that. It was hard for me. It still is hard for me at times. I look at a company I own, and again, don't buy just because I do, Alibaba. There's talk. I mean, Jamie Dimon came out today and said, hey, if we're ordered to leave China, we're going to leave China. That's a risk. And you better believe if China and Taiwan go to, go to war, mm -hmm. what's going to happen to Alibaba stock? Oh, all China stocks are going to go down. Absolutely. Yeah. So the question is, who has the stomach to wait that out? Mm -hmm. If your thesis is that China will eventually end up acquiescing to the West and realize that the West is where the money is and they want to be more like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a tough thing. That's why, that's why investing is difficult. Because in order to do well, you have to think differently. You have right. to sit there and look at a situation and say, it's probably over-exaggerated. I think Bob is over-exaggerated, but it could get a lot worse. Every stock I own, I hope gets over-exaggerated because I don't believe that the 20 or 30 or 40 stocks that I will own are all going to be wrong. Right. I think you're going to buy fundamentally good bit. Look at Target. People are like, oh, they're woke and they're, that's going to hurt them. Okay. I just don't think people are going to stop going to Target because they endorse a certain ideology. They're not. Yeah. And the They're stock not. the stock fell by over 50% at one point. Yeah. Now it's back up to 130. Right. 133. Oh, 133. 134, even better. <laughs> so how many people do you know complain because they're up 10 or 15% on a stock? I complain. I want my stocks to go down. The good news is rarely will you buy a stock at the low. Yeah, you'll probably true. buy... Rarely you'll buy a stock at a low. In fact, it'll probably never happen. So learn the process... Follow our channel, subscribe. You will become better at investing if you apply the same process or one that works for you. Thank you for your time.